now let's understand how to diagnose celiac disease the gold standard for celiac disease diagnosis is represented by combination of two tests first is duodenal biopsy and second is serological test this picture shows step by step procedure to diagnose celiac disease when you first suspect a patient with celiac disease on the basis of signs and symptoms then you first advise IgA TTG antibody level and total serum IgA antibody level let's see the first case in the first scenario where IgA TTG level is positive but it is less than 2 into cutoff value with normal IgA level then perform IgA antibody to anti-endomycial antibodies. If this IgA anti-endomycial antibodies are negative, then consider the other diagnosis. But if this IgA anti-endomycial antibody is positive, then go for duodenal biopsy. Let's see the second scenario, where the IgA TTG level is positive and it is higher than more than 2 into cutoff value with normal IgA level, then consider the duodenal biopsy. Now let's see the third scenario where the IgA TTG antibodies are negative but IgA total IgA is deficient. So go for IgG TTG antibodies or IgG DGP antibodies. If they are positive then go for duodenal biopsy. If they are negative then consider the other diagnosis. And if in the final scenario IgA TTG is negative and total IgA is also normal, then consider the other diagnosis than celiac disease. Now let's learn about the duodenal biopsy. How to diagnose celiac disease on the basis of duodenal biopsy. Current recommendation to take biopsies are the four biopsy on the second duodenal portion and two biopsies from the duodenal bulb. There are main two classifications for this biopsy to diagnose celiac disease are Marsh classification modified by Oberhuber and second is Coraza and Villanacci classification. Now let's understand first Marsh classi classification modified by Oberhuber. It is divided into the three types type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 and type 2 lesion characterized by increase in the intraepithelial lymphocytes which is more than 30 lymphocytes per 100 epithelial cells without or with crypt hyperplasia and normal villi. It is non-specific for CD but together with positive antibody test and minimal intestinal lesions can indicate potential celiac disease. The normal intraepithelial cutoff has been established to be less than or equal to 25 lymphocytes per 100 epithelial cells. Better identified with CD3 immunohistological strain. Type 3 is a typical lesion of celiac disease shows villus atrophy with a change in a villi to crypt ratio less than 3 to 1 is to 1 and increase in the intraepithelial lymphocyte. The type 3 is subdivided into the three stages where the partial subtotal and total villus atrophy are seen and they are 3A, 3B and 3C. The second classification is provided by the Coraza and Villanacci and they divided into the two grades, grade A and grade B. Grade A is non-atrophic and grade B is atrophic. And grade B is subcategorized into B1 in which villi to crypt ratio is less than 3 is to 1 but with identifiable villi. And grade B2 in which villi is entirely atrophic. So grade A lesions include type 1 and type 2 lesions based on the Marsh-Uber-Huber classification 
and grade B1 lesions include 3A, 3B and grade B2 include 3C.